Hi guys, today we're going to talk about flash photography for film photographers. And I'm going to teach you using a system called the guide number system, which allows you to calculate what your camera setting should be without any sort of light meter or anything, just using an easy mathematical formula. This actually works for digital shooters too, but with the LCD screen on the back of the camera, it's usually faster to just kind of guess and adjust from there with the digital. Anyway, if you don't know what a guide number is, a guide number tells you exactly how powerful your flash is, and it gives you a baseline that you can use to calculate what your camera setting should be. I'm going to be using for my camera a Mamiya 645 AFD2, which is a hybrid camera, which means it shoots both digital and film. And I'm going to shoot it with a digital back because it's a little easier for the editing, but it'll work exactly the same with the film. I'm also going to shoot with a Godox AD200 flash that will be kind of our uh, test flash for this. This flash has a guide number of 60. So let me explain how guide numbers work. The flash manufacturer will provide a guide number for your flash, and typically it's calculated in feet and at ISO 100, so that you know how many feet away your flash needs to be, what your f-stop needs to be, and at what ISO film you need to shoot to get that number. Now you can adjust it using mathematical equations for whichever film you're shooting. So you can adjust it with a mathematical equation to fit whatever settings you need to shoot. So your guide number for this flash is, F is guide number 60. That very simply means that at F60, at ISO 100, at one foot away, your film will be exposed properly. So it's very, very easy to figure out for whatever settings you want to use because most lenses don't even go to F60, let alone would you want to shoot there. There's two ways you can deal with this. You can deal with this by dividing the guide number by the F-stop that you want to shoot at, and that will tell you how many feet away your, your flash needs to be. Or if you have a distance that you want your flash to be, you can divide the guide number by the distance and it'll give you an f-stop. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to provide some examples of that. Okay, so I've got my mommy all set up, but we're going to demonstrate this a couple of different ways. My flash over here, like we said, is guide number 60, and it is about three feet away from me, which means that in here, guide number 60 divided by three feet means that I need to be at f20 to be able to shoot this and then have it properly exposed. Now, not a lot of lenses are gonna stop down that far, but my flash has the ability to adjust in increments of how much power it has. So I've set my flash to half power, which then makes my guide number 30, divided by three feet gives me F10. My Mamiya can shoot F10. So I've got my Mamiya set at F10, and we're gonna do what is it gonna end up being the world's ugliest studio selfie here. We're gonna grab my uh, release cable here, and my flash didn't go off. Let's wake up my flash. Let's try this again. So, we'll show you that picture here right now. Now, as you ought to be able to see, that at F10, at half power, this was properly exposed. So, you have a couple of different options now. Obviously, F10 is going to provide a very deep depth of field. And let's say that I wanted to go and shoot at F2.8 and get a really shallow depth of field. So I'm going to grab a calculator and we're going to see what that would be. So we can go guide number 60 divided by 2.8 tells me that I have to be 21 feet away for this flash to do 2.8 and be properly exposed. I didn't have 21 feet of space in the studio, so the only other option I have is to either step down my lens or to turn down the power on the flash. So let's see how far down the flash will go and let's figure this out. Okay, so our only option to shoot f2.8 is to divide the flash. And since this flash goes down all the way to 1 128, uh, we know that it's adjustable. So doing the math, if I go down to 1 32nd, which is a five stop decrease in light, we can go F60 divided by five makes our guide number 12. So we go 12 divided by 2.8 means that at about four feet, we should be exposed correctly. So I know that I am about three and a half feet from the flash right now. So that means that this ought to be right in the ballpark given the dynamic range of the camera. So let's grab our camera and let's wake the flash up again. Okay, 
Now, as you see, this is right about exposed correctly. So you can play with the math and you can play with the different variables and always know about where your, your camera settings should be to get proper exposure. Now, a couple of things to note. The distance is always from the flash, not from the camera, which means wherever you move the flash, point it at your subject so that you can play with different types of light, uh, different ways for it to fall on your subject, and know that it's always going to be from the flash to the subject, not from the camera. Now, you can do other things too, like I'm only playing with one flash here. If you have two flashes and you set them the same distance apart and they have the same guide number, it doubles your light. So if you're going to get into a multi-flash situation, you can absolutely still do the math, but the more flashes you add, the more complicated it gets. So if you get more than maybe two flashes, you're probably going to want to go out and get a light meter. But I've used this in situations where my light meter battery has died or I've forgotten it on a shoot, um, and it, it does work. You should also know that using modifiers like soft boxes or reflectors or whatever are going to change your guide number. Typically, a soft box is going to be about two stops less light, but it really depends on the reflectivity of your specific softbox and the configuration of how it's set up. So if you're gonna start using modifiers, you should definitely test beforehand or just use a light meter. One other quick thing to note is that the guide number system was invented in America very early on in codex history. So guide numbers are almost always expressed in feet. If you are one of my European friends or other areas of the world that use the metric system, you can divide the guide number by 0.3048 and that will convert the guide number to guide number in meters instead of guide numbers in feet. Also, you may want to check that your guide number from your flash manufacturer is at ISO 100. Almost all of them are, but some manufacturers, especially lower end ones, like to cheat a little and give you the guide number at ISO 200 or even sometimes 400 to make their flashes look a little more powerful than they actually are. Anyway, I hope this was useful. And if, it, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments. I'm always super happy to help. And as always, thanks for watching.